Hello everybody and thank you much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and in this video I will do a overview about NextDoc 2 touchscreen version and comparison against the older model, just NextDoc 2 with without a touchscreen. So we're just going to do a comparison between these two. I do have a list here on the left with all the points that I want to mention in this video. I, I have this for about three days now. I spend in total around 10 hours using this device and the list contains what I have noticed, what I don't like, what they, let's say, improved and what they basically <laughs> not improved that well and some of the things that is annoying me about this NextDoc 2 Touch. So let's begin. I'm gonna put the NextDoc 2 Touch on the left and NextDoc 2 non-touch on the right. So uh, the old one had 6,800 milliamps power, ba uh, power battery. The new one has 8,000 milliamps battery, so power is increased, it's great. The old one was 13.3 13 inch screen, and the new one is 14.1 inch screen, so it's bigger. Both of them are 1920 by 1080p resolution, and both of, both of them has 60 watt, 60 watt hour batteries. Accessories inside the, uh, the box that I received the new one in, uh, pretty much exactly the same, I received the charger, with the uh, with adapters to different regions, so US, UK, Europe, and etc. USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-C to USB Type A cable, and micro B cable splitter. So this is for Raspberry Pi computers. HDMI to HDMI cable, HDMI to micro HDMI adapter. This is, I do believe, for Raspberry Pi 4. Then USB-C to micro USB adapter, and when I ordered the NextDoc 2 Touch, I, I was able to pick up the UK keyboard layout. But just before dispatching this product, I received an email from NextDoc 2, from the company NextDoc, and they informed me that they can't get me a UK version of the keyboard. So instead, they sent me the overlay, which is okay. It's not the greatest of, of them all. It's very thin rubbery material, but it covers the keyboard quite well. And to be honest, I don't really. It's not a really a big deal breaker for me because the old one, old the next Doc 2 already had the US keyboard layout. So that was already a US keyboard. So I got used to this. So just because I wasn't able to get the UK version, it's not a big deal. So they sent me this overlay, which I'm planning to use, but not because this is a UK overlay, but because it's actually gonna protect the keyboard from getting the dust and all other things getting between the keys. So this is gonna act more like a like a dust cover and spillage cover. So the the if I, let's say I by accident dropped a, a couple of drops of water or something on this keyboard, it's not gonna go through the through the gaps next to the buttons, and it's gonna it's gonna stick in there. Another thing, if I'm gonna, it's very hard to peel that off. If I'm gonna open the next dog two now non touched version, I can put that one on here too. So that's basically just shows that the keyboard size and layout is exactly the same on the older model, excuse me, older model and the new model. What we get with the ports is the same as the before. We have full size HDMI, USB type C for charging, USB type C for Raspberry Pi computers and something alike. And that's the last one on the right, USB type C to connecting your smart devices to get the desktop environment um, over this picture. We get USB type A on the right hand side, we get USB type A 3.0, headphone jack, only audio out, and micro SD card reader. The speakers, uh, the, sorry, the build quality, speakers will be next. This build quality is pretty much exactly the same as was the old one. It's all metal, uh, aluminum build, no flex, um, no flex. The weight's pretty much the same, just sort of holding side by side, but the physical size, if I'm gonna put them one on top of the other, as you can see, the physical size is a bit, is a bit. Um, the new one is a bit smaller, and when you're looking this way, it's actually just a bit thicker. But that's because the actual screen, screen is a bit bigger. So if I'm gonna open this side by side, so if we're gonna do this way, hopefully you can see that the the new one, the new Next Doc 2 screen is slightly slightly thicker compared to the older, older model. But overall, it's the, um, it's, it's pretty much, the build quality and such is the same. The old, old one, I can easily open with one hand, 
with the new one I can't do that because I think they just strengthen the um, the hinges here so it feels more uh, more harder to open when new one is felt more fluid so there is no resistance nothing it was there is fluid uh, movement with this one it's you need to give a bit more a bit more um, force to open another thing if you compare these two instead of beside the new one is slightly higher so if I'm going to take for example my Note 9 as you can see I can get over the bump because this is just just tiny bit just tiny bit just tiny bit harder well the higher raised up compared to the older model the trackpad the trackpad is wider comparing to the older version of um, Nexdoc 2 the size of the trackpad is still the same 5.7 inches diagonal but because they they just squashed everything uh, squashed the actual all the all the body this became wider than the old one still sounds the same the actual uh, top bit the material that you're going to basically move your finger on it um, the older one is a bit more plasticky where the new one is more rubbery feel it gives a bit more resistance when you're trying to move the finger so uh, it's just uh, something I, I quite like the older one the, the new one I don't really like that much because it just it's a bit harder for finger to move around when you're using a next doc a next doc 2 a next doc 2 a lab docs you know there is a palm accidental touches impulse i think i mentioned that in the first review or, or video about the next docs 2 and sadly this still has that uh, it's not the next doc 2 as a lab talk lab doc um fault but it's more like android OS. but because this trackpad is a bit wider it's much easier right now or much is the accidental palm uh, inputs happening more often and while i was typing this list that i'm reading right now how i started to type on this keyboard and it's, it's it was very very um let's say happening too many times so i just gave up and i connected the bluetooth keyboard instead to my note to my note 9 uh, I connected this keyboard and continue typing using this keyboard because just accidental inputs was absolutely annoying me. Obviously, yes, you can using function and skip key to turn that off, but overall it was really annoying. Next thing on my list is speakers. Old one had the speakers here located next to a hinge. So if I open now, it was located somewhere there. The speakers was there. Where the new one has the speakers speaker drills here at the front so when you're using this this way the sound will go not from here but will go from from this part of your device one problem with the speakers i found out is that if you're playing a youtube video let's say you connect your phone and you're playing your youtube video and you lower the volume all the way down or and or, or you set the audio output not your phone not your galaxy device but the lab dock and you move the volume all the way down the speakers will start producing a very subtle white noise, like a humming thing. And it's not a big deal because in, in a, let's say, a noise environment, because you're not gonna notice them. But in a quiet place, like for example, yesterday, I was using this till quite late night and it was very quiet in the room where, where I was sitting and using it. That's all I was able to hear, just keyboard presses. But then when I lowered the music down, this humming noise starts appearing at uh, this white noise and when you notice it you can unnotice and you basically you will it's always going to be here there you're always going to notice that so i hope you you understand what i'm trying to say so the speakers makes this thing where old one once you move the volume all the way down it's not going to do anything it's quiet it's quiet as a mouse it's, it's literally no no bad no white noise happening but the new one when you move the volume down in a youtube video or something that you're watching and you just lower down the volume on the device actual device it basically starts making this humming noise which is very frustrating next step thing on my my list is the keyboard the keyboard like i said is the same size no difference same keys the the older one had the keys a bit more louder when new one feels a bit more softer to press the travel of the keys i would say is pretty much the same the size is the same all the key locations the same still you have the function key here so let me do this way so still you have the function key you have the the meta or windows key as I like to call it alt space everything exactly the same places one thing they changed and is absolutely annoying me while i was using this device is on old one 
I will show an old one first. So an old one, for example, you wanted to, let's say, uh, do a, turn the backlight on or re increase or decrease the brightness or volume. What you had to do, you had to press function and then press these buttons. So function F7, increase the brightness. Function F2, mute. Function F4, increase the volume. Was very handy. You, you're entering data inside Excel or any app. You, for example, F2 is works as F2, F5 is obviously like a refresh and you're just using it. And once you want to change these kind of things, you function, 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 and it was great. On old, on the new one, sorry, function key is on by default. So when you're entering data or you're on a website and you want to refresh the page, you press a five, but no, a five is not going to work as a five refresh the page, but it's going to turn the backlight on. So to do a refresh, you need to press function and F5 to refresh, function F2 to rename, function F8 to delete or something. So these keys from F1 to F12, they're gonna work as a function keys, like a battery, mute, volume down, volume up, and these kind of things, where escape to turn the trackpad off. You need to press function and that. So they swap the function out and it's super annoying me. This is a big deal breaker for me because when I'm using Dex for work, I need to enter a lot of data, a lot of things in Excel, et cetera, et cetera. And when everywhere, it doesn't matter which keyboard I connect, um, I when you press F5, it does a refresh. When you press F2, it does a rename. This, this is how I've been using computers with the keyboard since day one I got my first computer. And now this has been changed. So every time when I want to do a F1 or F12 functions, I need to press extra key and this is this is a big deal breaker for me it's just i'm not i don't want to go anymore in this this really really annoys me like a uh, next thing is a screen uh, like i said screen uh, this new one is 14.1 inches screen size the old one was 13.3 there's no bezels the old one had uh, bezels here so right now actually give me two seconds i'll plug them both in and uh, i'll we continue in a second so I have both NextDoc 2 laptops connected. On the right is NextDoc 2 old one connected to Note 9. On the left is NextDoc 2 touch version, the new one connected to my Galaxy Tab S6. And straight away, you probably already noticed the quality of the screen. And they are both the brightness. If I go this one, it's brightness is 100. If I go this one, brightness is 100. They're both exactly the same setup with the brightness and, and etc. There is no contrast settings uh, with these NextDoc, uh, with these laptops. And straight away, look how the old NextDoc 2 showing the picture more vivid to me, more pleasing to the eye to look at, where new one is absolutely feels like a washed out colors. I'm not sure that's how original was supposed to look like, or this one, this is, might be too dark for you, and this is, might be too better for you. But for my preference, I really like the way the picture looks like on the right compared to on the left. But that's that's what it is. So for for my for my preference for my eyes, the new one colors are washed out. Right. Next thing, bezels. On old one, if I wanted to mount my phone, I just connect this mounty uh, accessory. So as you can see, it not uh, obstruct any image because it just covers the bezels and it's all fine. Where if I'm gonna do the same on a new one, as you can see, it just does this. It's just it's covering the side, the portion, a small portion of the screen. This is not a big problem, I would say, for if, if it's not going to cover some important information on the screen. But if you are a person who don't like the cutout or punch holes on the smartphones to, to show the camera in the middle of the screen at the top, this might be a bit of annoying for you. So let's say, here you go. Here you go. I do have the, uh, right now this mount and it's just, I don't know, sticks into the to the screen. Uh, some of you ask uh, once I posted the first photo about this device on the Reddit. This is not a webcam. This is just a brand, uh, a printed brand, and plus there is like a little raised bump here. I think that's where all the touchscreen circuit board or connections or something to make the the touchscreen to work is actually located here. So it's not not the um, not the webcam. And another thing. OSD. So when you, for example, changing the brightness, as you can see, it says bright, uh, bright backlight and it's 100 volume and it's increased the volume. It's all fine. I can see what's happening. It says volume and etc. I can see what OSD is showing on the screen. If I do the same thing on the new one, I barely can see the text. I barely can see which volume is showing because it's like a blue font. So depending on what kind of background I will use. So if I open, for example, um, 
like I said, it obviously it's a touch screen, so I can use the touch screen, uh, touch screen input. So let's say if I want to increase the volume. So I can see right now it says volume, but once a picture appeared in there, I, I can't see anything. Uh, let me open, for example, Google and let's search inside the Google Next Doc. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one just to show you. I pressed the wrong app, my apologies. Uh, I just wanna show you um, the um, how the screen how the screen uh, looks when with this kind of brightness or the like I said washed out color. So if I'm gonna so it go. I hope you can hopefully camera can pick it up. But for my preference, I don't like the new Next Doc 2 screen. It's way too bright. The colors looks washed out and this if you're using dex to edit the photos or something i would say next dog 2 touch screen version will be beneficial for you to move with the fingers the images and just move around and etc but then the color representation of the new one i'm not sure if that's going to be a, a very good thing for you so in another let's quickly go into a uh, youtube i'm gonna quickly open YouTube app. I want to show you the um, the video playing. So let's quickly search that. So we're gonna search for Buck Bunny. So let's open this one and let's go here and search for Buck Bunny. So we're gonna play this video as a test on the old one. I think because no no nine is connected, the YouTube is not showing the tablet version. And here we go. I hope you can see the difference between the picture. I'm just going to try to move the camera just side by side for you to see. So you make a judge which screen you prefer, the old one or the new one. And for me, the new one colors feels it's like it's all blown out by here. The whites are absolutely burning. Where this one, I can see the contrast of the burning against the background. The green colors is green colors and etc. The sky was blue on the old one, on new one is really burned out. So I don't really, I don't like the the new one. This is could be just my preference, and um, obviously it's depending on your taste. Is it the worth upgrade for my use? No, I still gonna use Next Dog Two old one. The function keys, that's an absolutely massive deal breaker for me. For me, The function keys is super annoying. I don't like that they've done the function key automatically to be um, always on. It's up to you which one you want to pick it up. The bigger battery, yes. Slightly bigger screen, yes. The touch screen, yes. But other things like fun function key change, the trackpad, I don't like this being that big. I like the old, old one. And just the, the way the screen looks like on this compared to the new one, I, st I still like the old one a bit more. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video made sense to you. I hope I covered everything that uh, that you, you wanted to know. If I missed something, just share in the comment section at the YouTube, in the, uh, at the comment section below, or inside the Reddit where I'm gonna post this video as well. So go there and, and just share if something I missed, just let everyone know, just share with community what I have missed or maybe I said something wrong, just please correct me. Overall, this uh, this Next Doc 2 Touch is a good option for someone who's buying the first lab dock. It is a good option. But for you to upgrade from old one, is not so much. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.